you probably know the deal already. Sometimes I find out interesting things that are too short for their own video. So I put them to one side until I have enough of them for a compilation video. This is five interesting things, episode three. Interesting thing number one, cutting ice with diamond. Look, here's some diamond. It's synthetic diamond, which means it wasn't made in the ground. It was made in a factory. But look what happens when I press it into ice. The reason I can cut this ice with this diamond is not because the diamond is sharp. In fact, it's about half a millimeter thick and it has a flat edge. The reason I can do it is because diamond is a really good conductor of heat and it only works because I'm holding it between my fingers. So the ice is stealing heat from my fingers via the diamond. So my fingers are incredibly cold now. Like if I held the ice between my fingers, that would melt the ice too. But by using diamond, I can localize that heat and melt the ice in two. For comparison, here's the blade from a Stanley knife. It's much sharper and it's made of metal, so it's still a good conductor of heat, but it's just nowhere near as effective as diamond. In fact, diamond has about 40 times the thermal conductivity of steel. This weighs about 1.4 grams, by the way. So that's six carats, it's a six carat diamond. What's that, like half a million pounds? It's ridiculous. It's not really worth half a million pounds because it's a synthetic diamond and it's clearly a bit of an off cut. So it's not worth much at all. Interesting thing number two, the filament inside an old fashioned incandescent light bulb is a meta helix. So I made a video a little while back shining a laser through the filament of a light bulb. The diffraction pattern you get is similar to the pattern you get when you shine x-rays through DNA. It's part of the story of how we understand the structure of the DNA. Uh, link to that video in the card and in the description. But some people pointed out to me that the filament of light bulb isn't just a helix, it's a meta helix. It's a helix of a helix. You can just about see that in this shot here. I didn't notice it, but look, under a microscope, it's really clear. Interesting thing number three, vampire bats. Some vampire bats like to suck the blood of mammals. Some like to suck the blood of birds. One in particular, the white winged vampire bat is partial to birds. It particularly likes the rear facing toe of birds. That's the spot it likes to draw blood from. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe it's because it can sneak up from the underside of a branch that the bird is perching on. But what I really want to talk about is some really strange behavior that's been documented. So these vampire bats have been seen sneaking up to hens. And what they do is they nuzzle up against the chest of the hen. It seems to calm the hen down. And then it nuzzles even deeper until it's touching the brood patch of the hen. So birds have this thing called a brood patch. It's a patch of skin that doesn't have any feathers on it. And it's really well supplied with blood. And that brood patch is used to keep eggs warm during incubation and chicks warm after they're born. So it's a perfect spot for vampire bats. There's no feathers there and there's a good supply of blood on that patch of skin. So it cuts open the skin with its teeth. It has incredibly sharp teeth, which reduces the pain. And there's also anesthetic in the bat's saliva, which reduces the pain further so it can go about its business undetected. Interestingly, the vampire bat doesn't suck blood. Instead, it has these tiny channels in its tongue and in its lips. So blood is drawn into the bat's mouth through capillary action. It's an audacious move on the part of the bat because hens are dangerous, like they have sharp beaks. One well-placed peck could kill a bat. And it only works because these bats have figured out or learned or evolved the ability to mimic the behavior of a chick. And it works to the point where the hen even welcomes the bat to that most vulnerable part of its skin, the brood patch. I couldn't find any footage of it actually happening. So here's a chick doing it instead, which is arguably less disturbing. Thanks to Bill Schott for his description of this behavior, a link to his article in the description. Interesting thing number four, the word second. It has a few different meanings, but the main ones are the length of time, as in one second, and the ordinal number, as in first, second, third, and so on. I find it really interesting that I never noticed that they were the same until someone pointed it out to me recently. Maybe that says something interesting about, I mean, uh, maybe it says something interesting about the way my brain works, but maybe it says something interesting about the way language works in the brain. Like we don't notice these similarities when the context is different. But anyway, 
The reason it's the same word for both of those things, the length of time and the ordinal number, is because we take an hour and we subdivide the hour into 60 smaller parts, we call those minutes, and that comes from the Latin pars minuta prima, and that translates literally to part small first, as in the first small part, the first time we subdivide the hour into smaller parts. But we don't say pars minuta prima, we shorten that to minuta or minute. But then we subdivide the hour again. Each one of those small parts is subdivided into even smaller parts. And in Latin, that's pars minuta secunda. In other words, the second small part, the second time we subdivide the hour into smaller parts. And we can't shorten pars minuta secunda to minuta or minute because we're already using minute for the pars minuta prima. So instead, we shorten pars minuta secunda to secunda or second. To put that more succinctly, the reason seconds are called seconds is because it's the second time we subdivide an hour into smaller subunits of time. I'd like to live in a world where minutes are called firsts. Be good, wouldn't it? Like, this video is 10 firsts and 49 seconds long. Interesting thing number five, most owls have asymmetrical ears. And the asymmetry can be achieved in a few different ways. Like some owls have asymmetrical skulls, some have asymmetrical kind of, you know, ear flaps, bits of skin. In fact, we know that owls have evolved ear asymmetry independently at least three times because we've observed at least three different mechanisms. So we know that ear asymmetry is important for owl survival. And it's to do with the fact that owls use their ears to detect the location of sounds. I made a video recently about uh, what's called interaural time difference, the way we humans detect the location of sound using the difference in timing. So for example, if a sound's coming from over there, it's gonna reach this ear before it reaches this ear. We use that time difference to, to figure that out. If a sound is coming from directly in front, then it's gonna reach both ears at the same time, but it doesn't tell us anything about you know, how high up the sound is. The sound could be coming from up there, it could be coming from down there. It's gonna reach both ears at the same time. And actually to an owl, that distinction is really important. Like if you're hunting a mouse, you wanna land on that mouse, but it, you know, how, how far along the ground is the mouse? That up and down distinction is important. So for example, if you're an owl that has, you know, uh, a cup facing a bit downwards on the left and a cup facing a bit upwards on the right, then the sound coming from below is gonna be louder in your left ear than it is in your right ear because it's going through the cup on one side and it's being caught by the cup on the other side. That's called interall intensity difference. And owls use that for the up and down direction. Interesting thing 5.1, this is the owl's eye. This is also the owl's eye. You can see an owl's eye through an owl's ear. I've done something a bit silly with the sponsor this week. It's hosting it. And you might know that I have a website that goes with these five interesting things videos that just list all the interesting things. It's ninterestingthings.com and it's hosted with the sponsor, hosting it. Uh, I use them because they've got two-factor authentication. I can deploy with Git. There's a few other nerdy features like that. You might feel like you're not a nerd and that's not appropriate for you, but they also have a really user-friendly interface as well. You don't have to worry about all that nerdy stuff. And what I wanna tell you about this week is the auto installs. They've got so many of them, like obvious ones like WordPress. So you click on WordPress, you fill in the name of the website, and then you've got WordPress and you can start blogging. They've got e-commerce ones, they've got wikis. So, you know, install a wiki and suddenly you're Wikipedia. Admittedly, your Wikipedia with no data in it, but you know, it's a start. All of these auto installs, check out this one. It's a yours, a URL shortener. When I saw that, I was like, right. So I bought a, a short URL, 1sm.me, and I clicked on yours, filled out the name of the thing. Now I have a URL shortener. How cool is that? Guys, if you need a URL shortened, just, just ask me. So yeah, I recommend you have a look through their auto installs. It might give you some inspiration for an idea or it might remind you of an idea that you had that you never got off the ground. Who knows? It could be the start of something great. 
If you go to hostingit.com forward slash Steve Mold, you can get up to 91% off web hosting packages when you use the promo code Steve Mold at checkout. You can also go to 1sm.me forward slash A. That was the first thing I shortened. And isn't it short? Look, it's only one character after the slash. It's amazingly short. That's better than bit.ly. Anything's better than anything. Just, I mean, you can't get something short like that. Tell you what. I'm going to sack off this YouTube business. I'm 100% I'm on the URL shortening game now. I'm going to be a millionaire. I should figure out how to make money on it, actually. Patreon. I could do Patreon. Patreon.